that level of professionalism, uh, the level of skill sets to be anywhere in the world, time on target, plus or minus 30 seconds. I'm uh, Tyler Merritt, CEO and founder of Nine Line Apparel. He's firing, he's firing. He's firing. Go ahead and shoot him. Go ahead and shoot him. He's shooting at us. He's done. He's done. I was all about playing Army, uh, about going up to West Point with my grandfather. Uh, he was a 16 when he joined the Marines. He stormed the beaches of Iwo Jima, got shot in the kneecap, shot in the helmet, and you know, he never really talked about stories, but you knew kind of what this guy had, had done. Uh, definitely influenced me. My brother actually enlisted in the Army when he was 18, and uh, he was the biggest influence in my life in terms of, you know, someone I looked up to. Um, and then obviously 9-11 happened. I was a senior in high school and uh, I had friends who lost parents and that definitely influenced me. A lot of my friends just went straight in and enlisted. My brother kind of convinced me that, hey, you got an appointment to West Point, that's a huge honor. Grandpa would be proud, you should go do that. And that's, uh, that's kind of how our paths kind of diverted. He went the enlisted route, I went the officer route, and uh, he went to the ground and I went to the air. And, the rest is kind of history. So I left West Point, went straight to flight school. So I went straight to a unit that was deploying with uh, 10th Mountain. And I flew gunships out of Iraq. Spent most of my time dropping bombs. Closet gun. And it was definitely not exactly what I expected. Everyone's very excited to go and do the thing that you've trained for. And they don't realize, you know, what war is, and it's hell. Uh, and that was an eye-opening experience for me. Um, it made me realize that I did enjoy uh, being able to help those guys on the ground. Um, and it made me fascinated with going into the, the 160. The 160th has a specific mission set. It's supporting special operations, your tier one groups, your tier two groups, everyone from Delta on down to the different ODA teams. Um, and our job essentially is to be anywhere in the world, time on target, plus or minus 30 seconds. I started Nine Line when I was still uh, a special operations uh, air mission commander. Uh, it started off in my garage and it really was a hobby. It was myself and my wife. We saw a niche and a need for doing custom apparel for the different special operations groups. So we would do the morale apparel for the 160th, for the Rangers, for the SEALs, and we wanted to create something that had meaning. And the idea was, how do you close this divide between civil military? Uh, you know, there was a big divide, and this logo, uh, it started a conversation. And that was the intention, is to try to bridge that gap between those who serve and those who support us and try to have an explanation of what we consider patriotism, why we go overseas to some god-awful places uh, to fight for it. And that's what it's all about. You, know, you can be liberal, you can be conservative, but what we're talking about is how do you give back to your community? And that's, that's what we boil it down to, is that you're doing what you need to do for your community, for the person to the left and to the right of you, and, and trying to set an example for your kids. A nine line is a Kazadak call in the military. It's a distress call. When someone's injured on the battlefield, someone like myself would come and pull them off. I feel that here, the, the nine line has a different meaning. It's more indicative of how do we reinvigorate patriotism. It's a call to action to every American that you know try to do good things for people for no other reason other than that's what we should be doing. The relationship with Black Rifle Coffee started off very interesting. Uh, at the time, 
uh, when I was stationed up at West Point, my brother decided it'd be a great idea to create a coffee brand that looked very similar to Black Rifle and launch it on a Friday evening and effectively um, anger the founding members of Black Rifle, rightfully so. Are you fucking high? So I had to have a very interesting conversation uh, with Matt and Evan and JT to explain, hey, this is a mistake. You know, we will make it right. They understood that it, it was an absolute accident and we remedied it. Um, and that next thing for me was I wanted to get out there. I wanted to go and, and meet with Black Rifle and say, this is who I am. This is what I'm about. I love your company. I love what you represent. And as two veteran organizations, I feel that we can do a lot together. You know, I make great apparel, you make amazing coffee. Let's find a way that we can work together. Uh, it, it was a uh, joint initiative between Evan and myself. We kind of sat down and um, I had an idea. I said, hey, I've got this apparel uh, store in Savannah and I think it would be great to have a black rifle shop attached to it. Uh, and it kind of started off as that, just that handshake, absolutely man, go for it. The next day I set out to create this, this first uh, franchise, obviously working with those guys hand in hand and we had something up and running in six months. So we are very excited to expand beyond our first store. Um, we've got our headquarters at Nine Line, we do all of our production and we have our first coffee shop. Uh, and we're looking at Charleston, and we're looking at downtown Savannah, and we're looking at Jacksonville, we're looking at Eglin, uh, and looking all over to expand. There's a demand for my company, and there's a demand for Black Rifle, and I think there's an even greater demand when you put them together. People are excited. It's, a, it's an interesting story, and I think we just got started.